Today I'm going to show you how to install fridge panels for an IKEA kitchen system. So in this scenario we're going to teach you how to deal with out of plumb walls, out of level floors, things that are crooked and not straight and true. Because of course anything that's perfectly level and plumb and square is easy to deal with. You just cut it on a table saw and away you go. But this scenario is a little bit different so we're going to just show you how to how to start, what to look for, what to be aware of, and some techniques on how to cut the panels. Um, another thing I'll say before we get started is just quick, I have another clip or a video on just the different IKEA panel sizes. So if you're planning in a kitchen, just use that as reference because then you can get familiar with the panels and know which sizes you can use in certain areas and how to manipulate and use the panels to customize the kitchens. And don't forget to check out my full IKEA series where we install a kitchen start to finish. So that's a five part series. Anyway, let's get into it. What we're gonna do right now, we're gonna put a full gable they call it a full panel all the way to the top there then there'll be a fridge cabinet above but we need to give that enough space for a 36 inch fridge i'll talk get into that a little bit and we're going to keep it just nice and simple today and then there'll be another gable panel which helps support this cabinet above because this cabinet's two feet deep okay so i will show you some tricks and stuff first off this level is ideal for situations like this it's an extendable stabila level they're awesome we use it for everything from finishing to to framing to foundations but at the end of the day if you don't have one of these just rip a strip of plywood and use that as a straight edge cut it to the height that you need and then use a two foot level or a four foot level I'll give you the same idea but i'll show you why it's handy because i'm going to put this up against the wall here near the top i can move that up a little bit so you can see if you pan, if you look at the top and the bottom, I'm touching above and below. There's a gap in the middle. But if you look at the level, it's nice and it's nice and plumb. So there's there's two ways I can do this. And there's two ways to look at it, depending on how picky you are. If I wanted to be really picky, I would actually oversize this we're going to use a 36 by 96 inch panel i'd oversize this by whatever the gap is so i'd measure essentially in this scenario right from the wall to the face of the cabinet plus three quarters maybe a hair less okay then that would be oversized and then i would put the panel in place and i would scribe it to the wall and just basically contour it to fit tight to the wall okay so that's the more precision way, it takes more time, it gives you a better result at the end. Now this way that we're going to do it, um, this panel we're going to do the, the easy route, okay? I talked to the guy, I'm helping my buddy Tim, he said, you know what, because we're doing tile backsplash on this side over here, we're going to hide the gap that's exposed right here, right? So you're going to, you can imagine this, there's a panel up here, there's a little gap. The tile on this side is going to hide it and then where the fridge sits you'll see a gap at whoever pulls out their fridge and most of the time you're looking at the floor because it's so bloody dirty right so you're not going to look at a little gap five years down the road or six months or whatever it is so that gap isn't going to concern him he's okay with that it gets hidden over here we got a little different scenario we'll get into that when we get to it but at the end of the day we're coming into this trim so you won't see a bulge in the wall here either. You'll see a gap on the inside where the fridge is, not a big deal. This is slightly out of plumbs, so I'll show you how we're gonna deal with that later. But anyway, because this is nice and plumb, I'm not worried about it. So then what I did is I'll just hold the level up there. I actually just found a fancy, I just hooked my tape in here. And then I just measured to the front of the cabinet off of the level because that's where the panel is going to sit and then I just add just under three quarters of an inch so I come up with 25 and 3 eighths now because I'm not um, scribing that 
I can just rip that on the table saw. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'll show you how to do that. So one thing you wanna do is get the panels laid out and just assess them. Sometimes they get damaged on the corner. So you have to be careful using and moving around all the panels. So just try to move them minimal, minimal amount because yeah, you can damage the corners and stuff. So what we've done is we've assessed this one. Tim looks like he's moved it around a few times. You can see some scuffs on this side. Right, so yeah, you just gotta be careful when you're handling them. So what we've assessed this side, well what I wanna do, now you can see my little cardboard that I've put on my sturdy so I don't scratch the heck out of it. So normally I don't use, the, I would call this the inside of the panel, but because it has the sticker here, but this side does look nicer. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'll put the nice side towards the tile or towards the, the basically the most exposed part. The scuffed up side is gonna go on the inside where the fridge goes. Yeah, I'll show you how to measure this because if you have an oversized item on a table saw, you, I guess this one you might be able to set it to 25 and 3 eighths, but if you can't, we do it the other way around and we flip it so you can cut it, you cut the narrow side against the fence. So let's just imagine, I want the panel to go through the table saw like this. I, you always want the good side up. I want the fence here because it's too big. My fence isn't bigger than 25 and 3 eighths. So what I've done is you measure 25 and 3 eighths and you make your mark, right? And then when this is against the fence, my blade's gonna sit right here. So when I measure I just got to measure to the other side of the blade, the opposite side of what's typical when you're using a table saw. Usually you want to keep this side, but this side I want to get rid of. Anyway, 10 and 5 eighths is what I'm going to set the table saw to. So I'll just show you how to do that quick. Yeah, so I just make sure that I, the 10 and 5 eighths is to this side of the blade, which it is. So that's 10 and 5 eighths. So what I'm left with on the off cut is 25 and 3 eighths. One thing you can do to verify that you have the dimensions right and you didn't get flipped around in your head and with just switching the, the side of the blade to cut on is just line it up to the saw, even start the saw and just do a little incision. And if you cut your line off, then you know you have the right dimension and you've done everything correctly. It's just one way to kind of foolproof it and double check. So the next step is to cut it to height. Now what I like to do is leave a factory finish along the bottom just in case I get water down there, it won't absorb into the, to the plywood or the particle board. So I like to keep a factory if I can. Sometimes you don't have the option. So I wanna cut the top off. So the panel's gonna sit just like this. Um, now I'm gonna cut this with a skill saw. So I'm gonna do a good side down. So I'm just gonna flip it the proper way. And just, just so you know, just be aware of those things. So I'll cut the top off, I'll have a cut edge on the top, finished edge out front. I've got it right the right way. Now let's figure out if the floor is on a level or not. So what I've done here, if I've just done a mock-up, just in case you don't have a two foot level and you, you only have a torpedo, just cut a straight edge of wood about the width of your gable. Then you just set your level on that, use that as your straight edge. Now you can see I have to come up a little bit in the back. So. I guess at this point in time, you, again, you decide how careful or how perfect you want it. <clears throat> but let's just make a mark to see how much out of level it is or how far it's out of level. Because I'll just mark the bottom of this. And then all I have to do is just measure the distance from here to my pencil mark. And that's how out of level we are. So if that's up like this, Um, sometimes I got to think about these things. So I'd measure from the floor to the upper, the very top, and then whatever this dimension is, it's about three sixteenths or quarter inch. That's what I would take off of the front and I would cut. Yeah. They would come off the front and taper towards the back. So sometimes even just draw a picture to make sure you don't cut it the opposite direction. And I guess at this stage I need to decipher which way I want to do this. I made my decision. 
I'm actually going to do this nice square cut, leave the factory on the bottom, but it'll show two scenarios. Cause when we come over here, I do have to taper cut it. Cause you can't just leave a gap over here. Whereas here I get away with it. Again, the fridge is sitting against it. You'll never see that gap. So in this video, you'll see both scenarios on how to, how to determine the heights and lengths for each one. So here I'm going to verify that this is perfectly level to my pencil mark. And if it is, then what I'm going to do is I'll have to get some help or actually just right now it's, that's a quarter inch gap. So I'll just measure the total height at the back to the very top and I'll just take a quarter inch off. And that'll be my total height of my panel because it's going to be sitting out here where I want it sitting and it's night, like it's actually nice here. I don't, I don't want to gap out front. It'll look like dog's breakfast. So that's okay. Gap in the back's fine. Um, my math will work so that the measurement's actually from here to the top of the upper cabinet, if that makes sense, right? Because here out to here with this being level is the same dimension. I guess another way you can measure it if you're, if you want to get technical, you can do both ways. You can always double check things. Let's say 94 and a quarter. Or I measure from there to the top minus a quarter and you can do it both ways. So I hope that makes sense. It's even I'm getting confused a little, a little bit, but let's do this. Like I said, we're going to cut this to 94 and 3 sixteenths. I'm just going to make my mark on both sides. I'm going to end up cutting this with a skill saw just to show you guys how to cut panels. If you don't have the ultimate setup. Tim's trying to build in the background. So those are the marks that I want to cut it at. Now, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to put a straight edge here on the side that I want to keep. My blade is going to be over here, but I have to figure out the distance from the blade to the edge of the fence. And then I do a back set mark and I clamp down my level. And then when I cut this, it'll end up cutting that off. So you just got to be able to visualize it. So you know which way to measure it. So if I do this, now it has a safety. I can't accidentally cut my fingers off. So don't worry about that. I try not to look totally goofy. So what I do is I like to just spin the blade like that and just measure it. And that's an inch and a quarter. And that's the side of blade that I want to measure from. So, and because I'm partially OCD, inch and a quarter. I would probably just take the inch and a quarter off mathematically, or you can just do it where you just hold it at whatever, six and a quarter and take it to the five. Now I like to just do those little marks and I like to just circle them so I know that I don't get confused between my clamp and my, the part that I actually want to cut off. So I want to measure back inch and a quarter. That's my clamp mark. All right. Next thing, don't clamp it with the notchy in the middle. That'll bugger you all up. You just want to mark, go like that. If like I've done this so much, that I, I'm comfortable just doing it right off the hop. But just if you're unsure of yourself or your measurements or your saw, just try a sample on a scrap piece of plywood. Make sure that you have the right offset, whether it's an inch and three sixteenths or an inch and a quarter. Get comfortable with your dimensioning before you start hacking into panels. And then I'm just going to basically go just you can just barely see the line basically halfway on the pencil line all right so like i mentioned on the table saw part you'll know right away when you cut into this if you're if you're right or you're wrong on your dimensions but um i want the good side down because the circular saw cuts on the up motion and depending if this was a finished side back here i might want to pre-tape everything if i was being like basically super anal I could pre-tape the whole thing, then make my marks and then cut it. 
so that way it'd get less chipping, but I think we're just gonna give it a go. I'm used to using the IKEA systems that have like the vinyl wrap panels and doors, whereas this series is more like a stained wood. And so there is more likely of chipping as you can see. So that chipped away, that's on the inside cut. But like I said, just tape that if you're concerned about chips and stuff. We had to do little adjustments so that no edit thing still applies, but I just don't look as cool because it's not perfect. Um, but this is real life, this is how it is. Like if you don't buy extra panels, then you're gonna have to either fudge something or go get a new, the new panel, right? We're a little bit short up top. So you can see down there that we, we just had to shim it a little bit. I don't think it's the end of the world. Most of the time you, I would silicone that anyway, especially with water to a fridge, because if I have a leak, I want the leak to run outward. So I notice the leak right away. So that'll probably get siliconed. I don't like doing it. Like I said, we had to fudge it a little bit. So we're flush up top, but let's actually see if it's plumb, because the level said plumb, we did zero scribing, and even the little torpedo showing not too bad. So this is the panel we're gonna end up using, space the exact same way, a little off the floor, screw it, we're all good there. But I do wanna show you how to account and calculate if the wall is out of plumb, which is very likely to have happened, although we lucked out here with it being plumb and just a little crown in the wall, I am just gonna show you how to do a taper cut with a skill saw, because it's too hard to do on a table saw. So here's the scenario. You put your level up, you notice the wall's out of plumb. So what I suggest is just put your level into the plumb position. So don't look at this, let's just assume it's plumb and we have the gap at the top. Measure the gap, what's the difference? Half an inch, All right? So. Now we got to think about this, I, I, at least I have to, I'm not that bright. Um, to determine the bottom dimension, you can just measure off the wall to the face of the cabinet, add three quarters or 11 sixteenths. You don't want to be more than three quarters past the front of the cabinet. That way you cover your doors a little bit. So you can measure off the bottom, that's an easy dimension to calculate. But because the wall is leaning like this, and if you, sometimes I have to draw a picture so I can visualize it, the wall's leaning like this, so the top is gonna be bigger. So if we use the 25 and 3 8, that means the top has to be 25 and 7 8, half inch bigger. Okay, so let's use a different number so I can use a scenario. Let's just go 20 and 3 8 and 20 and 7 8, just so we can use it on, my, on the same panel there, okay? Um, but all you have to realize is, okay, the top is wider at the top so that out here the face of the gable is plumb but one thing you want to do before you get too crazy now because this is very close to 96 inches if you went on a full length panel and did the taper based on 96 versus 94 and a 3 16 I don't think it would change that much or it would throw it out but if you let's say just a weird example if you had a 10 foot panel and you only needed it 94 and you did your taper cut first before cutting the height, it, the taper would be off on the wrong angle and it wouldn't be plumb anymore. So just make sure cut it to height first, then do your taper cut. Hopefully that makes sense. So yeah, let's do the, let's just do a little mock up here. All right, so this one we want, we want this side. All right, this, this is the bottom. So let's just do 20 and 3 eighths there. This is the top. We want 20 and 7 eighths, like that. Now, if you don't have a nice long straight edge, just cut a piece of panel because that'll be straight. That's what I did. All right. Now, remember, that's the mark that we want to cut it. We're gonna cut this with a skill saw, same as when we cross cut the top, so I won't go through that again. I'm gonna measure back the inch and a quarter from each mark, 
then we'll, I would just simply clamp this on. I always want the clamps on the side I want to keep. I shove this over and I cut it and that's how you do a taper cut. Essentially just with a straight edge, a clamp and a skill saw. Good side down. Yeah, and sorry if I didn't mention, but yeah, you can see the gap along the bottom, which we knew was going to happen in the gap in the middle of the panel too, which we predicted. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and fasten this on. So essentially what we're doing, set the panel, put the upper cabinet in, bring the other panel down. There's a few things involved. First thing is just don't slam the upper cabinet in just yet. We have to leave some space for the fridge because we want to put a 36 inch fridge, but you want some space on either side. So I'll just draw you a little diagram. You can kind of see how we've got started here. But essentially, I have two gable panels. I have my gable panel here, and then I've put a short 20 inch high panel there. Then I'll have 36 inches for the upper cabinet, another panel, and then the final gable. So I'll actually have 37 and 3 eighths of space in between for the fridge. Now this is easy because it's essentially panel, cabinet, panel, gable, right? Like it's really easy, there's no big spaces. If you wanna space out more than that, you have to just get a little more creative with your filler panels. Oh, and one last thing that I'm gonna do here before I start going into other options that are available, I'm actually gonna, I like to throw in a panel along the bottom here. So what that does, is I'll show you, is it'll be flush with this and it'll be a gray panel. Whatever dimension I want, it doesn't have to be full. There's some people, I don't know, three or four inches from the top of the fridge to the underside here. So you're, you have an option, you can build it down so it looks custom built in. I've done that before. Or I'm just gonna slam a panel up on the underside here and I can go back this far or I can go back the full length. And it's just so I don't see the white underside of the cabinet there. Okay. Now, having said that, depending on which way you want to go, the way this panel set up right now is if I don't do the panel on the underside, doesn't matter because I have a finished edge there. Um, what I could have done, I could have cut this narrow and then I could have even had this as a cut edge. And then when I put this piece on, it's all hidden. So I don't, I didn't need this full size panel, but because I wanted to measure out the 36 inch across the back, get my level line, hang my rail on, get my cabinet up, all that kind of stuff. I just thought it'd be easier for measuring and dimensioning to put this full size on. So I'm just trying to give you guys options and different scenarios on how to do this. So anyway, we'll just keep progressing here. I've marked, I've come over and I've marked the top of this architrave. You can see, I'm just going to get my flush cut and my multi-tool oscillating device, whatever you call them. I'll just cut this down, I'll pop this trim off, and I'll rip that down later. Installed the upper cabinet. As you can see, we're three quarters of an inch back like we're supposed to be. Now, how we did that is quite simple. I'm not getting into how to hang on the rail system. That's in my other videos. But essentially, you just make a nice level line, measure 3 16 down, and that's what the rail goes to. It's in other videos. Um, this over here, if you look, I did have to fur it out three quarters of an inch, but I don't want to get into the details. I don't want to confuse you guys on this video. We did make another video on what things you can manipulate, other things you can't. And because there was a corner out of square here and we moved it off the wall just so that the dishwasher had the 24 inches opening. So that's why that got furred away, but it didn't affect anything else. So you have to be mindful of that. Now what I'm gonna do is I have it clamped. It's nice and flush across the whole top. It's sitting nice and level. Once I screw this in, then I can take all my dimensions and calculate and figure out what we need to do to this gable panel 
for cuts. Now this, these are gonna be more precision cuts. You're gonna wanna stay tuned for that. So let's get this nice and solid, then we'll just keep moving on. All right. I've gone as far as I can before I need to start figuring out this panel. I put on this filler and all I did was just match this three quarters of an inch overhang. And I did the same here. Now I did the, I left this as a cut piece on purpose just to show you what is capable or what you're capable of doing. Just make sure you leave that a little bit proud. And at the end, we'll just cap the underside here, whatever dimension we feel like or whatever we have left over. And that'll make the underside look real nice. So now with the, everything as far as we can go, we'll try to figure out this panel. So it's very similar to the first one, but what I need to do is I'm touching top and bottom, but I'm slightly out of plumb. So what I'll do is I have to actually take the top to the plumb position, make sure the bottom's still touching, which is about, let's say about a quarter inch, if you can see that. I don't need to measure that. And the reason why, and I don't need to do a taper cut either. What I'm gonna end up doing, if you look down, because the wall has such a bow, if the top has to come out, it also means the bottom could go in. And because it has such a wow, what, I'll, what I'm gonna try to do is cut the panel from the measurement from the wall to the outside here. I'll hold the panel up into position and then I'll scribe cut it and I'll just take off the bottom curve, which should just pull the bottom in and make the front, the front nice and plumb. So that's what we're gonna do there. So we'll start with that. And then to get my bottom height, now that the cabinet's in place, like I can get my height set too. And I might, depending on what I do, I'll have to cut the height before I scribe it but it's now easy. I can just measure from the cabinet right down to the floor, so I'm bang on accurate. And unfortunately, the bottom piece will end up being cut. It won't be as waterproof, but you know, if a guy had lots of time, you could just prime that or paint it, but it'll end up getting siliconed anyway. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do. Let's just see how she goes. What I wanted to do is just make sure that my, my cut was accurate. I'm nice and flush right up here. This isn't gonna change. I'm proud right here, but that's because the bottom still needs to get kicked in, right? To keep it plumb. So that's all working according to plan. Next, I'll calculate my height. But one thing I don't wanna forget to do is just put a little chunk of panel at the back there so that this doesn't tip in over time. And the reason I had it out was just so that I could get the level in there, the old plumb stick, just so I could see what was going on there. So. Yeah, don't forget to put a panel at the back there. This little nugget's in place. Now we can just measure the height. What's nice about that is now I can just get it bang on dimension wise. So front, 93 and 15. Now, if I would have brought that panel up flush to the top, it would have helped me. But what was nice about this is I used just one dishwasher panel, a 25 by 36, for all the spacing, so I didn't waste any panels. So I just gotta get a straight edge so I can measure that. four and three eighths small. So I flipped this and I figured out in my mind, this is the bottom and obviously the gable front edge is my front. So 93 and 15 at the front. Okay. And then what I can do is I'll just go inch and a quarter back from there for my saw or my straight edge. So 94 from 95 and a quarter and I'll just circle that. 94 create small. Okay, and then I'll just back that off an inch and a quarter. 
And because I want this one to turn out a little better, I'm just going to tape the cut line. And I'm going to tape that bad boy all the way around. So I just made my new mark on the masking tape just to make sure that my dimensioning is right because I only have one chance to do this cut. Yeah, and just look at, look at how much better that cut is just from that tape. Do the unedited dry fit again. Part two. The back is exactly where I want it. Now the front is high. Now don't get stressed out yet because we still have to scribe it to the wall to make the front plumb, which will bring this down. This will stay flush all the time. And as it moves in at the bottom, it'll help this become flush as well. So, and then maybe let's just look at the floor and see. Yes, yeah, so we're off the floor at the front, but as we take material off the back and move it in, it'll drop down on the front as well. So there's lots of fancy ways to scribe and you can get creative if you want. I'm just gonna make sure this bad boy's up against the wall and it's close to my line. I made a plumb line on the wall before I got too far ahead of myself. So remember we were about a quarter inch out. So I'm gonna just start with the gap that's about a quarter inch. There. So I'll hit that with the jigsaw. Depending on which side I do, what I might end up doing, I might scribe it on the inside. So if I, let's say I cut this with a jigsaw, I'm gonna want a blade that cuts on the downstroke so it doesn't chip all of that off. But what I'm gonna do is I'll scribe it on the inside, then I can use a blade that cuts on the upstroke and it won't chip the outside of my panel. And if the inside's chipped a little bit, I'm less worried about that. So let's try that on the inside. And I have to keep in mind, I'll be up against the trim over here. So I'll take a little extra off of that line. So I know that it'll fit nicely. And in the inside, like I said, it'll be covered by the fridge. This is a reverse type blade. The teeth are pointed this direction, which means they cut on the, the down stroke. So that's nor most jigsaw blades. The teeth are the opposite and they cut on the up stroke. So just, just be aware of that so you know which direction to flip this. So I'll actually go good side up here and I'm gonna just take the line off plus a little bit. Before I get ahead of myself, I've just learned this from the past. I'm gonna pre-drill some holes. I'm gonna use a two inch screw. I'll show you how to figure that out. But what all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill this so that it's just a hair bigger than the actual screw itself. And I'll show you why in a sec, but I'm just gonna pre-drill four spots. That'll help me fasten the panel from the inside of the actual cabinet. Now I'll show you how to figure out what length of screw. Might be a little tricky for you to see, but if I just try to eyeball it flush with the inside, you can see I'm about an eighth inch shy of the outside panel. So I know it's safe. I can't sink it like a wild man, but that's how you know. Simple little tricks. So we'll, we've got that done and uh, we'll just dry fit this and make sure the scribe works. We're very close. Uh, if you look here, I've got a little gap down the center and it's tight at the bottom. 
It could go in at the bottom a little more, so I think I'm just gonna do third times the charm. That will allow this to come in a little more flush. It'll bring that top down a hair. And then after that, I can just manipulate the cabinet up and just tweak it and clamp it to make everything flush the way I want it. Now, good thing I checked. This is pretty close to plumb. In all reality, if I take more off of the bottom, it's gonna make it worse out of plumb. And the other panel is dead on. We can double check that or just show you, but just so you know, this one ended up real nice. So I'm gonna basically, I call that the happy medium. I, not perfectly plumb, just a squeak off. I can manipulate this to make it all flush. So I'm gonna just call that a good to go. The pencil mark will get hidden by trim. Um, yeah, pretty simple. I clamped and pinned the top there. This bottom was a hair proud. So once that was screwed, I was able to just push back on there, clamp that flush, just manipulate the cabinet a little bit. Use the screw gently. You can see I didn't poke through, which is nice. Now I can just finish off fastening that gable panel. So I cut this piece when we ripped these panels, they're 36 by 96, remember that? This is the cutoff strip. So I didn't have to rip it again, just had to cut it to length. Will the no edit work this time? Ooh. Nice. Little persuasion here. Okay. Gonna clamp that. One thing you might have to do is just shim this with a piece of paper or something. These side panels just protrude ever so slightly across this bottom panel. So I might just throw a piece of cardboard or something in there and just make it so it's nice and straight. But other than that, screw that in. It hides anything from the underside. Now it doesn't go right to the back, but at least it just stops your eye from seeing the stark white and just the bolts and stuff. Once the fridge is in there, it gives it a nice clean look, borders the doors a little bit. And uh, yeah, I think you guys get the point. I hope that video helped. I gave you lots of different scenarios, different ways to cut the panels or figure it out. So I think that is, I think it's important because at the end of the day, no house is perfect. And especially if you're trying to work on a budget, you're working on an older house, you wanna do it within reason and you're not gonna be perfectly square and level and plumb. So, Something like this I think is going to help you guys, so I hope it does. You know, shoot me a comment, shoot me a like, and uh, subscribe to the channel, and thanks for tuning in.